All right, hello once again, uh, class. Uh, welcome back. Uh, sorry for the uh, interruption. No? Uh, like I said earlier, I can only record 15 minutes uh, straight, so uh, I had to I had to cut it uh, earlier. So anyway, here we are now, and we will continue with the uh, the rest of the rules on uh, subject verb agreement. Okay, so we have uh, rule 5a. Okay, um, you would notice sometimes meron mga sentences na gumagamit ng mga phrases along with, as well as, besides. Uh, what you have to understand is yung mga ganyang phrases, they do not affect the uh, singularity of uh, the subject, if the subject is singular. So, let's have a look at the uh, following examples. No? Yung mga bolded uh, words, yun yung subjects, uh, of course. So, for this uh, example natin, Michael Jordan. Uh, as well as the rest of the Bulls, was very famous in the 90s. Okay, so what is the subject here? It's Michael Jordan. Uh, the rest of the Bulls is uh, mentioned. Okay, the rest of the Bulls were mentioned, but they don't affect the uh, singularity of uh, the subject, Michael Jordan. Uh, what you have to understand is yung as well as, it's not like the word end. No? Kasi kapag end ang ginamit mo, uh, magiging plural yung uh, subject. Pero kapag ganyan, as well as, along with, besides, uh, hindi po nagiging plural yung subject. So kung sinabi natin halimbawa na Michael Jordan and the rest of the Bulls, uh, ang gagamitin natin were. Okay, Michael Jordan and the rest of the Bulls were very famous in the 90s. Pero kapag ganito, as well as, uh, nare-retain yung pagiging singular ng uh, subject. Okay, and then yung next example natin, uh, adobo as well as pizza, is our best seller. Shout out to uh, Famous Pizza. <laughs> uh, so, adobo, uh, it's in bold. Of course, that's the subject. Uh, singular, so therefore, is our best seller. But again, if we use the word and instead, adobo and pizza are our best sellers. Ganun naman na magiging uh, resulta, no? So, let's have a look at the next rule now. Uh, rule... B. Okay, words in parentheses are not part of the subject. So, for example, Sir Van uh, and Sir Fandy, close and open parenthesis, always comes to school on time. Okay, uh, ang verb natin dito is the word comes and merong S. So, obviously, it's in the singular form and tama po yan. Ngayon, ang pangit lang kasing pakinggan kapag uh, ganyan kasi kung babasahin mo yan, Sir Van and Sir Fandy always comes to school on time. Okay? Ganun ang base dyan eh. Pero, it, uh, if it's written down at merong parenthesis, um, we have to ignore the words within the parenthesis. So, ang subject lang talaga dito is servant, singular, therefore, tama yung comes. So, just a bit of advice, iwasan na lang natin yung mga ganitong sentences. No? Tanggalin mo na lang yung uh, words and, uh, or tanggalin mo na lang yung parenthesis completely. If you do, uh, the subject becomes plural, Sir Van and Sir Fandy always come to school on time. Okay? So, next rule, rule number six. Uh, in sentences beginning with here or there, the true subject follows the verb. So, bakit merong true subject? Ibig sabihin, meron bang fake subject? Well, uh, yung mga words kasi na here, tsaka there, ayun yung mga tinatawag natin na mga dummy subjects. no uh, It sounds like they are the subject of the sentence, pero not really. Uh, kasi normally, nasa start sila ng sentence. So, let's have a look at a couple of examples here. There are nine barangays in uh, Paite. Okay? So, what is the subject here? Hindi yung there. There is a dummy subject. So, the true subject here is the barangays. Uh, nine barangays. So, Plural, obviously. So, ang gagamitin natin dyan ay are. Hindi pwedeng there is nine barangays in pwede. Okay? But on the other hand, uh, look at this example here. There is no tenth barangay. Singular. Okay? Uh, so, ang, ang gagamitin natin uh, is is. Okay? So, I hope that uh, that is clear. Kapag merong here, tsaka there, uh, hindi yun ang uh, subject natin, no? You have to look for the true subject of the sentence. And normally, they follow uh, the verb kapag ganito yung uh, phrasing, kapag merong there, tsaka here. Alright? So, rule number seven, use a uh, singular verb with distances, periods of time, sums of money, etc. when they are considered as a unit. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, 
uh, yung measurement of distance, measurement of time, measurement of money, uh, it's a singular concept. So therefore, it will have to take uh, a singular verb. So for example, more than 20 kilometers uh, separates you and me. So this is our uh, example. Yung sinasabing 20 kilometers, it's one unit of uh, it's it's one unit describing the distance between you and me, long distance relationship. No? So, uh, we we stick to the word uh, or we stick to the singular form of uh, separate. So separates. Uh, next, two hundred pesos is a bit too steep for a meal. Okay, masyado daw mahal kapag uh, two hundred pesos para uh, sa isang uh, meal. So this is a single unit. Two hundred pesos is the price. Uh, of uh, the meal so that is a uh, one concept singular concept so 200 pesos therefore is kahit na uh, plural yung uh, form ng pesos no uh, but when is it not considered as a single unit well have a look at the uh, third example here 200 pesos where sc- uh, scattered all over the floor nagkalat daw yung pera okay so in this particular case uh, the money is no longer considered as a single uh, unit Nagkalat yung, yung pera, no? Um, therefore, we have to use where. Where scattered all over the floor. Okay? Now, we go to the next rule. Okay, this is, uh, this is, you have to keep this in mind. Okay? Whenever the uh, words indicate portions, uh, a lot, a majority, some, all, uh, kasama na dito yung mga fractions. Uh, one half, one fourth, tsaka mga percentages. 50%, 25%, or whatever. Uh, mababaligtad yung una nating rule kanina no uh, if the noun after of is singular then we will have to use a singular verb if it's the other way around if it's a plural then we have to use a plural verb so let's have a look at uh, a couple of examples here so half of the students are done with the exams okay so hindi yung half ang subject mo dito ang subject mo dito ay yung students so students plural therefore are Okay? So, medyo kabaligtaran nga ito nung rule natin kanina na i-ignore natin yung words after uh, of. Okay? In this particular case, kapag portions, uh, baligtad yung rule. Uh, next, half of the pie is eaten. Okay? So, again, half is not the subject. The subject is uh, pie. Pie is singular. Therefore, the verb is uh, is. Okay? Uh, next, 50% of the boys in class play ML. So, 50% is a percentage. Boys is the uh, subject. Boys meaning plural. Ang verb natin ay play. Okay? Next, 50% of the class has an Instagram account. So, in this particular case naman, class ang uh, subject natin at dahil singular ang class, has ang ating verb. Okay? So, ganyan lang naman yan uh, kasimple. Uh, rule number 9, Collective nouns naman. With collective nouns such as group, jury, family, audience, population, the verb might be singular or plural depending on the writer's intent. So this one is a little bit uh, tricky kasi titignan natin yung intent nyo. Ano ba yung gusto nyong uh, iparating, no? So, for example, the staff were ha- uh, having an argument. So the word staff is the subject, uh, pero it's a collective noun, no? Um... The family was in agreement. So, in this particular case, uh, ano ba yung gusto nating iparating? Dun sa una, nagkakaroon ng pagtatalo yung mga staff. So, that means that they are not uh, to be taken as a single unit. Kasi meron ngang split eh. Merong argument, may pagtatalo. Therefore, hindi natin pwedeng uh, gamitin yung was. Kasi obviously, there is a uh, split within the members of the collective noun, which is staff. Uh, yung second example natin, the family was in agreement, okay? Then they are, you're aiming to, to show that the family is uh, united. Therefore, the correct answer would be uh, the singular verb, so was in agreement, okay? Um, ang tip lang dito, you have to be consistent. Uh, the staff are having an argument as to who should lead them in the next project. So, for example, uh, itong sinulat ko dito, hindi pwedeng the staff are having an argument as to who should lead it uh, in the next uh, project. Kasi where yung ginamit mo, tapos yung kasunod na pronoun ay it, uh, that's not going to, to work. No? Um, kaya them yung gagamitin mo. So, you have to make sure that you're, uh, you are consistent. 
kapag uh, plural mo nang nasimulan, tapusin mo na ng uh, plural. Kung singular, singular. Okay? Uh, rule number 10, the word where replaces was in, tense, in sentences that express a wish or are contrary to fact. Um, contrary to fact, ibig sabihin lang nun, hindi uh, totoo. No? So, for example, if Jose Rizal were still alive, he'd be killed all over again. Uh, Jose Rizal is a subject, obviously, singular siya. So, most of the time, ang gagamitin natin is, was, di ba? Pero, this is a special rule kasi hindi totoo na buhay si Rizal. No? So, yung mga if statements na, nag na nagbibigay ng... Uh, uh, mga contrary to fact uh, situations, uh, kailangan ng gamitin natin ay where instead of was. So, ano pa yun? If I were a boy, or if I, yung kanta ni uh, Beyonce, diba? So, in that particular uh, song, uh, demonstrated yung rule na pinag-uusapan natin. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na subjunctive uh, mood, okay? When we are expressing something that's hypothetical, wishful, imaginary, or uh, contradictory. Ano pang example? If I were you. No? If I were you, I would be uh, very uh, happy for whatever. So, mga ganong uh, uh, sentences, no? Okay, let's have a look at the uh, next uh, slide. Rule number 11, everyone and everybody typically takes uh, singular verbs. So, everyone is present, everybody wants to rule the world. Uh, it's the same rule with the words anybody, anyone, nobody, somebody, someone. Um, may mga nalilito dito kasi obviously kapag sinabi natin everyone, that's a lot of people, di ba? Uh, sinabi ko, everyone in school. Then I'm talking about all of the teachers. And obviously, hindi lang isang teacher ang pinag-uusapan natin. Pero everyone kasi is uh, a singular concept. It's, it's a single unit. Kaya siya pinapair with the singular verbs. Okay? So no need to be confused uh, there. Pero merong mga in, ibang indefinite pronouns. Kasi by the way, these are what we call indefinite uh, pronouns. Uh, kapag few, many, several, both, all, ayan, mga plural, plural verbs yan. Pero everyone, everybody, anybody, anyone, nobody, somebody, someone, singular naman. Okay? Next, rule number 12. Infinitives and gerunds are typically singular except when joined together by end. So, ano ba yung infinitive? Ano ba yung gerund? Uh, kapag gerund, ayan yung mga verbs in the ing form. Uh, normally, sila ay uh, ginagamit na nagpa-function as noun. Uh, therefore, subject ng mga sentences. So, for example, running is a form of exercise. And kapag pinagsama mo yung uh, mga gerunds, nagiging plural sila. So, running and swimming are forms of exercise. Ang infinitive naman is the basic form of the verb uh, with the word to. So, to see is to believe. To see and to believe are two different things. Okay? So, remember, uh, infinitive, plus the basic form of the verb, gerunds uh, ing. Okay, they function as nouns. They function as subjects. Okay, well, actually, that's the end of uh, the lesson. Um, since this is a YouTube video, obviously, you can uh, re-watch it. Kung medyo nalabuan, you can go back to certain parts na hindi uh, malino. And if you have any further questions, then we can discuss it when we meet. Uh, sa ating synchronous uh, session, uh, ang pinaka-importanteng bagay siguro is matutunan nyo munang ma-identify kung ano yung subject ng uh, sentence, okay? Kasi yun yung magdi-dictate ng uh, form ng uh, verb. Alright? So, I will see you again, uh, class, next time. And thank you so much for watching the video. And you have a good day now. Okay? Goodbye.